this juncture where there is the crisis and the crisis is real and we are experiencing it more and more every year um, with the impacts of climate change. This year, you know, over 300,000 people in the global south will die from violent, unpredicted climate weather related events. We're trying to fight this this false dichotomy that has emerged over the last couple of years especially that we have to choose between the economy and the environment. Labor does not buy the notion that moving towards a sustainable environment is going to cost jobs. In fact, our message is it's quite the opposite. We can have a better and stronger and fairer economy. And that's simply true, right? If we take climate change seriously, um, it's going to create huge numbers of jobs, like millions of jobs around the world. It's up to us to make sure that those jobs are paying a living wage, treat workers fairly, and that's why you know, we have to make sure that this transition that is inevitable is a justice-based transition. If we want people to be fighting alongside environmentalists, we have to deal with the issues of survival and decent work and racism and immigration policies and violence against women because that is the kind of crucial everyday experience of people on the streets. The climate movement needs to actually take up climate justice and that means build roots. If we have a more inclusive conversation, then what you find out is that in a city like Toronto, there are millions of people who have direct experiences of climate change. Toronto has a huge Filipino population, it has a huge Caribbean population. Um, I mean, India is in the midst of a drought that's taken thousands of lives this year. So people actually know more than they're given credit for, and that experience needs to be valued. So we have an incredibly diverse coalition of groups that have come together that believe in addressing the justice issues, that believe in this future forward thinking that we plan on making known to the world on July 5th right here in Toronto. So this is a very exciting moment. I believe it's a historic moment. We don't just want off this roller coaster. We're ready for the next economy. Coming from, it's coming from the centre of power, it's coming from the Ontario Legislature and it's going to come to Allen Gardens in the downtown east of Toronto, which historically has been a place of incredible poverty, but also of incredible resistance spanning decades. So whether you're people of colour, whether you're Indigenous, whether you're of the LGBT community, whether you're part of the labour movement, which means you're in the working class and not necessarily somebody with as much power, all of these groups are marginalized in some way and all of these groups need to fight um, for themselves and for each other in solidarity with one another. Our union, our members, I firmly believe understand the climate crisis that is approaching us and they want us to act. If youth realize this, and they realize the connection between the fossil fuel industry, the fact that jobs are at stake, and the environment. I think um, you know, we can make a huge difference. We've been saying for years, there's got to be a limit. There has to be a consideration of ourselves as part of creation, not as over above. In joining our voices together in this march, we're saying, the old systems that we've had in place are clearly not serving us as Canadians. They're not serving the environment. When we talk about let's have a green energy revolution, who will profit from the green energy revolution? Who will have those jobs? If we don't challenge the structures of power already in place, it will not change what we're seeing. So I think that by putting forward a positive message right out of the gate, so this isn't the march about the no, we all know the no and we're all fighting the no, we're all fighting the pipelines, we have to keep doing that. But this march is about the yes that we want.
We want to build a society where we're not just struggling against poverty, but we're actually creating a society of, based on human solidarity that is really worth something. That struggle has to merge with the struggle to build a just society because a society that is prepared to abandon people is certainly not going to pay attention to a sustainable future for the climate.